We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. Pleasant good morning. These devotions are brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. I am Father Christopher Higgs, the Assistant Curate at St. Barnabas Parish, located on the corner of Wolf and Blue Hill Road. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. For today's scripture reading, we will use Psalm 80. Give air, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt, you drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, it took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its roots and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see, have regard for this vine the stock that your right hand planted. They have burnt it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance, but let your hands be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In Psalm 80, the Israelites had become distracted by many things. Many of the people became arrogant and were distracted by false gods in the land. They made alliances with people who were not even serving God. They didn't really think they needed God because they were blessed by everything they needed. Joshua had led them into the promised land. They had defeated their enemies. They had an abundance of everything and thought they could make it on their own. The many distractions led them into a sense of false security. The enemies finally defeated them and led them away into captivity and they resorted to prayer, crying out to God to restore them. This plea 
which reverberates through the psalm, reminds me of a song that was written in 1863 by a Scottish medical doctor named William P. Mackey, entitled, Revive Us Again. Some of the lyrics of this well-known hymn declare, Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. William Mackey's song, Revive Us Again, is a prayer for revival, and so is Psalm 80. After being defeated by their enemies, the Israelites didn't even think God was hearing their prayers. Verse 4 gives us the impression that they thought God was angry against their prayers. They still considered themselves God's people but they felt so far from him. I have heard many Christians say the same thing. God is not hearing my prayers. God is not answering me. Could it be that we have allowed many distractions to lead us away from God, that we no longer feel his presence as we once did? These people of God went back to square one. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel. They had begun to recognize their need of God. Awaken your might and come and save us. They are saying, stir up your might, which now seems to be dormant and silent in my life. Restore us. When we think of restoring something, we want to make it beautiful again, to polish it or refinish it to a similar value, valuable state that it once was. Although most of us do not remember our baptism, we still are able to relive it each time we witness a baptism and we have the opportunity to begin our life anew in Christ through our baptismal vows. Pretty powerful stuff, or at least it can be. Through the renewal of our baptismal vows, through fervent prayer, through repentance and God's grace and mercy, We are given the opportunity to start again, to do better this time, to live up to Christ's teachings and values. Lent is not only 40 days of self-examination and reflection. It is preparation for truly participating in the death and resurrection of Jesus. It is about dying to an old identity, which may be defined by our culture, our traditions, our habits, and even our families, and being born into a new identity centered in the Spirit of God. It means dying to an old way and being born into a new way of being, being centered in God. Jesus was alone in the wilderness for 40 days and nights, but we are not alone. We have each other, and we also have something else on our Lenten journey the opportunity to encounter God as Jesus did. This Lent, I pray that we ask God to truly revive us, to fill each heart with his love, and to rekindle each soul with fire from above. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for listening, and if possible, please share with a friend. Revive us again, fill each child with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again.